Chapter 128 The Leaping Sphere of Flesh After finishing eating curry with everyone, Vandalyu informed Iris and her companions about the reincarnated individuals, with the exception of the now-destroyed Death Scythe, warning them to be careful. Each person's name, the cheat-like abilities they possessed, and the attributes of magic that they were proficient in. And what the reincarnated individuals had in common with each other. Explaining that cheat-like abilities were like unique skills gave the inhabitants of Lambda a good idea of what they were. And it was convenient because no matter how impossible-seeming and outlandish the cheat-like abilities were, inhabitants of Lambda generally accepted it, saying, that's the kind of unique skill it is, and, it's a unique skill so there's nothing to think about. This was because in the past, there had been newly discovered unique skills that defied previously existing reason and knowledge. The reason Vandalyu had told them about the attributes of magic that the reincarnated individuals were proficient in was because he thought that if they were smart enough to keep their cheat-like abilities hidden rather than use them rashly like the Gunnir Kanata had done, they would likely use magic. Unlike Vandalyu, the reincarnated individuals apparently had the experience, knowledge and skills they possessed in origin as skills from the moment they reincarnated in Lambda. But if they were to be reincarnated in adult bodies, the thing that they would be relying on in addition to their cheat-like abilities was not martial skills, but magic. The reincarnated individuals had received military training in origin, and they had learned various combat techniques as well as how to use firearms. Keita Kanata had also possessed the throwing and unarmed fighting technique skills. However, according to Legion, none of the bravers who had died were masters in combat techniques. They had reasonably high ability in military-style unarmed fighting and the use of knives, but most of them were simply at the level of ordinary professionals. If converted to Lambda's skill levels, they would be mostly around level 5 or 6. The only exceptions were apparently the Mage Masher Minami Asagi and the Odin Hazamada Akira. As martial skills didn't exist in origin, combat techniques were inferior to magic in all kinds of ways. This was especially true with the existence of modern weapons such as firearms and explosives. Even so, masters of combat did exist in origin, but, rather than aim to become such masters, the reincarnated individuals, having been given cheat-like abilities, had likely chosen to polish the use of their cheat-like abilities and magic. And in Lambda, firearms and explosives didn't exist. The reincarnated individuals might become able to create gunpowder, but doing that would be equivalent to hanging up a sign that read, Hi, I'm a reincarnated individual. And according to Iris, a former believer of Alda, Alda's teachings stated that the champion Bellwood had forbidden the creation and use of a flammable black powder, though not a single person had created such a powder in a hundred thousand years, so this was a taboo that had been all but forgotten, recorded in only the oldest, heaviest scriptures. And although Rodcourt could grant reincarnated individuals the qualities and affinities for magic, he could not give them experience directly. If he could, there would have been no point in reincarnating them in origin first. That was why the reincarnated individuals wouldn't suddenly become new masters of elemental magic. Thus, for the reincarnated individuals to take action without being able to rely on modern weapons or use martial skills, they had no choice but to use the elemental magic that they had been proficient with in origin. But is there any purpose to knowing their names? Since they are being reborn, will they not be given new names? Iris asked. That's a reasonable assumption, but that's only if they're reborn as babies, said Vandalyu. If they come in adult bodies, their names should be the same as the ones they had in their previous lives. I've heard that it's not easy to change your name, too. In Lambda, one couldn't simply follow a procedure and undergo a name change. The reason was that the name displayed on a person's status was the one that was considered to be that person's real name. And the identification papers that would be needed for long-term activity in Lambda required one's real name. Even if one were to talk their way into registering with a fake name, they would be found out once the magic item for issuing guild cards was used. Among the reincarnated individuals, there were some whose names had clearly changed since they lived in Japan, but there wouldn't be anyone who would suddenly perceive themselves to have a different name without even being reborn as a baby. I see. 
But why won't you tell us what their faces look like? asked Debbie's. Their bodies and probably their races can be different. Also, their faces will be quite different depending on their age, Vandalyu said. When he had gazed back at the clairvoyance ten to Tatsuya with the abyss skill, he had seen the general appearances of the reincarnated individuals while they were just souls. He had been able to recognize them from Legion's information, it would have been impossible with only his memories from Earth. That was the case even in Origin, where humans were the only race, but there was no telling how it would be in Lambda, where there were multiple different races. It would still be all right if they were elves, who had similar physiques to humans, but if they were reincarnated as dwarves, who possessed quite different physiques, or even beast people who possessed the characteristics of beasts or draconids, it would certainly be impossible to identify them based on appearance alone. The truth was that they couldn't be reincarnated as members of Vita's races due to them being a part of a different system from Rodcourt's, however. And the thing that the reincarnated individuals will have in common is that they won't be able to use no attribute magic at first. In origin, time attribute and no attribute magic didn't exist. Even if Rodcourt granted the reincarnated individuals an affinity for time attribute magic, there was no such thing as an affinity for no attribute magic, so they would have to train from scratch in order to become able to use it, just as Vandalyu had done. In other words, we must be wary of those who possess unique skills that have the effects that we have information about and are proficient in certain attributes of magic, as well as those who cannot use no attribute magic despite being able to use magic of the other attributes. Iris concluded. That's right, said Vandalyu. If the reincarnated individuals were to be reborn in adult bodies, they would have unknown personal histories. Despite that, they would possess skills at around level 5. Unless they were extremely clever in their behavior, they would certainly stand out. And the Sauron duchy in which Iris and her companions were based was under the Amid Empire's occupation. Entering and exiting the duchy on the Orbom Kingdom side was difficult, and only soldiers and merchants with passes were allowed in and out on the Amid Empire side. Iris and her companions, who had the wide support of the people and even had informants inside the Empire's army, would be able to notice the presence of any reincarnated individuals. However, the reincarnated individuals should also notice that it is difficult to enter this region. I am unsure if we will be of any use, Iris murmured. No, if you do notice them, you shouldn't try to capture them, said Vandalyu. Secretly sending word to me will be enough. I'll be leaving golems that you can use to contact me. No way, your majesty. We won't lose to them. No matter what unique skills they have, a bunch of guys who can't use martial skills will be a pushover. Isn't that right, everyone, said Hodge. He and the others raised their fists, which were still holding their spoons, into the air to show their fighting spirit. No, that's not really the case, Vandalyu said, trying to calm them down. Calm down. Listen, those guys are really crazy, they're not opponents that you can match, said Miles, his loud voice drowning out Vandalyu's. Last night, Boss fought one of those reincarnated individuals and nearly died. You people just need to report information to him. Do you understand? W what? His Majesty almost died? Hodge exclaimed. He and his companions opened their eyes wide in astonishment. No way, His Majesty. His Majesty, who still had room to breathe even while fighting the pure-breed vampire government. Cool, indeed, as we are now, we would be able to do nothing but by time, Iris murmured in frustration. No, well, I did almost die, but Vandalyu felt like he was tricking them. It was true that his heartbeat and breathing had been stopped, and Zadiris and the others had been in a little danger as well. It's fine, isn't it? They're listening now. Lying is a means, too, Miles whispered with a wink so powerful that it was almost audible. I suppose you're right. It's true that the reincarnated individuals are really formidable enemies, too. Well then, I'll be applying clairvoyance countermeasures to this base and then going back, Vandalyu said. 
After that, Dandelu carved strange patterns on the roof of the base and set up mysterious stone circles in its surroundings. Having returned to Talashim, Dandelu headed for the usual job changing room. Normally, participating in battles himself while increasing his level helped him progress with the acquisition of skills, but he'd been too busy this time, so he had been leaving a clone of himself nearby where Borkus was defeating Mikhail to leech experience points, and his zombie maker jobs level had reached 100. Setting up clairvoyance countermeasures seems like it will take quite a lot of time, after all. I suppose it'll be stone circles in the marshlands of the lizard man and Scylla. He had to spend time on countermeasures against the reincarnated individuals, but the reincarnated individuals were a new, powerful threat, so Vandalia needed to become stronger to face them. It was all very troublesome. Jobs that can be selected, Corpse Demon Commander. Disease Demon. Spirit Warrior. Whip Tongue Calamity. Vengeful Berserker. Dead Spirit Mage. Dark Healer. Labyrinth Creator. Demon King User. Magic Cannoneer. Golem Creator. Dark King Mage. Divine Enemy. Dark Guider. When Vandalyu touched the crystal ball, the list of jobs displayed in his consciousness had even more dangerous sounding jobs. Assuming Dark Guider is similar to Demon Guider. Can one person have multiple guider jobs? But divine enemy. If someone found out I had this job, they'd immediately treat me as an evil being. Though Vandalyu had recently built new relationships with gods, it was undoubtedly because of Rodcourt or perhaps Alda, the god of law and fate, that this job had appeared. It could just be because he had destroyed Gubbaman, however. No, it hadn't appeared when he changed jobs to Zombie Maker after that, so it was because of Rodcourt after all. Getting a hold of himself, Vandalyu chose the job that he would change to. I choose Golem Creator. Considering the bonuses to his attribute values, the choice would have been Dark Guider, a Guider-type job like Demon Guider. However, Vandalyu chose the Golem Creator job that seemed like it would be related to alchemy. He had created life gold and spirit silver and successfully created two of alchemy's three holy grails. He thought that if he could increase his alchemy skill even further from this point, he could get closer to achieving Darcia's resurrection. That, and the golem transmutation skill was certainly helpful. The levels of the golem transmutation and alchemy skills have increased. The golem transmutation skill has awakened to the golem creation skill. The carpentry, engineering and blacksmithing skills have fused with the golem creation skill. Name, Vandalyu. Race, Damper, Dark Elf. Age, 9 years old. Title, Ghoul King, Eclipse King, Second Coming of the Demon King, Guardian of the Cultivation Villages, Holy Son of Vida, Monstrosity, Scaled King Tentacle King. Job, Golem Creator. Level, Zero. Job History, Death Attribute Mage, Golem Transmuter, Undead Tamer, Soul Breaker, Venom Fist User, Insect User, Tree Caster, Demon Guider, Archenemy, Zombie Maker. Attributes Vitality, 2241 Mana, 1,082,220,588, plus 324,666,176 Strength, 996. Agility, 748. Stamina, 1053. Intelligence, 2225. Passive skills. Superhuman strength, level 5. Rapid healing, level 10, level up. Death attribute magic, level 10. Status effect resistance, level 8. Magic Resistance, Level 6 Dark Vision Demon Path Enticement, Level 2 Chant Revocation, Level 6 Guidance, Demon Path, Level 4 Automatic Mana Recovery, Level 6 Strength and Subordinates, Level 7 Venom Secretion, Claws, Fangs, Tongue, Level 5
Enhanced Agility, Level 3. Body Expansion, Tongue, Level 5. Strength and Attack Power While Unarmed, Large. Enhanced Body Part, Hair, Claws, Tongue, Fangs, Level 4. Thread Refining, Level 3. Mana Enlargement, Level 3. Active Skills. Bloodwork, Level 3. Surpass Limits, Level 8, Level Up. Golem Creation, Level 1, Awaked from Golem Transmutation. No Attribute Magic, Level 8. Mana Control, Level 7. Spirit Form, Level 8. Carpentry, Level 6, Combined with Golem Creation. Engineering, Level 4, Combined with Golem Creation. Cooking, Level 5. Alchemy, Level 7, Level Up. Unarmed Fighting Technique, Level 6. Soul Break, Level 10, Level Up. Multicast, Level 6. Long Distance Control, Level 7. Surgery, Level 6, Level Up. Parallel Thought Processing, Level 6. Materialization, Level 4. Coordination, Level 4. High Speed Thought Processing, Level 5. Commanding, Level 4. Plant Binding Technique, Level 5. Thread Reeling, Level 5. Throwing, Level 5. Scream, Level 4. Dead Spirit Magic, Level 5. Insect Binding Technique, Level 5. Blacksmithing, Level 1 Combined with Golem Creation. Artillery Technique, Level 4. Shield Technique, Level 1, New. Armor Technique, Level 1, New. Unique Skills Godslayer, Level 8, Level Up Grotesque Mind, Level 7, Level Up Mental Encroachment, Level 6, Level Up Labyrinth Construction, Level 6 Demon King Fusion, Level 4 Abyss, Level 4, Level Up Hostility Demon King Fragments Blood Horns Suckers. Ink sacks. Carapace. Curses. Experience gained in previous life not carried over. Cannot learn existing jobs. Unable to gain experience independently. The announcer's voice echoed inside Vandalia's head. His creation type skills had suddenly fused with the golem creation skill, which seemed to be a superior version of the golem transmutation skill. Hmm. Vandalu was slightly bewildered. From previous experience, he knew that the skills that existed prior to skill fusion didn't disappear when they fused. Thus, he was trying to test the skill out right away on the death iron of a throwing kunai that he was holding, but, the sensation was somewhat strange. I feel some discomfort, but there's no response from danger sense, death, is it a problem with my mana? When he tried to turn the kunai into a golem to change its shape, he could intuitively think of two different ways to do it. One was the usual method. The other was a method that would consume an amount of mana that was an order of magnitude higher than the usual method. What is this sensation that feels like a million yen corner has been built into a hundred yen shop? Now that Vandalyu thought about it, was it best to create a one lina shop in Talashim sometime? He wondered how profitable the hundred yen shops of Earth had been. Talashim had many nocturnal inhabitants, so the number of 24-hour retail stores was increasing, however. With his thoughts going in strange directions, he turned the death iron kunai into a golem with the normal method first. The sensation and accuracy of the shape alteration was the same as always. Next, the large mana consumption method. Vandalu's mana decreased by an enormous amount. Not by one million, but by a hundred million. And then a kunai appeared in Vandalu's palm and fell onto his foot with a heavy noise. Fortunately, it was made of liquid metal so it didn't pierce his foot, but even though it was liquid, it was just as heavy as iron, so it was quite painful. 
With watering eyes, Bandelieu looked at the kunai shaped death iron that had appeared, which was now lying by his feet, and the death iron kunai whose shape he had altered by turning into a golem. This is a result that seems like it would make Lasiliano happy if he saw it. Just as its title suggested, it seemed that the golem creation skill could create matter and use it as a golem. Up until now, Vandalyu had been unable to create golems with golem transmutation without using pre-existing matter as materials. Even when he built structures, stone and lumber had been necessary materials. However, the superior skill, golem creation, could create matter from nothing. It seemed that it used a large amount of mana in return. Since Bandelieu needed over a hundred million mana to create a single throwing kunai's worth of death iron, how much would he need to create the usual material transporting golems or fighting golems? However, if Bandelieu could master the use of this skill, he would really be able to build a fortress city in a barren wasteland. Well, I already have Nochen, so I get the feeling that I won't need to be able to do that. The Bone Fort Nochen, who was a combination of a large number of bones joined together, was a mobile fortress that could fly through the sky. It was currently at the southern end of the marshlands, acting as a base for the Dark Knight Knight's Order led by Isla. For now, I'll inspect how much mana is consumed based on the properties and amount of matter I use this on, but before that, I'll try to see if I can fix the resurrection device, Bandelieu said to himself as he left the job-changing room. The sub-dragon monsters that inhabited the C-class dungeon, Borcus's sub-dragon savanna, that were now referred to as dinosaurs, fled in fear of the sphere of flesh. Ha 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 ha! This sphere of flesh was not the one found on the paws of animals such as dogs or cats. It was an enormous, spherical lump of flesh. Translators note, the word referring to the pads on the paws of dogs and cats is flesh sphere in Japanese, so there's a kind of pun here. It was closing in on the dinosaurs and mowing down the fern trees in its path. Even though the dinosaurs were dungeon-born monsters that were more ferocious than regular monsters, they couldn't help but to instinctively flee. And numerous arms and legs were protruding from the side of the sphere's surface, kicking against the ground to propel itself forward. fa ha 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 It was even letting out the loud laughter of a woman from somewhere. Even a Tyrannosaurus Rex was fleeing. However, Tyrannosaurus Rex monsters were rank for monsters. They would be classified as small fry in Borcus's subdragon savanna, a C-class dungeon. That Tyrannosaurus Rex was running towards a roaring rank 5 huge triceratops. Already ready for combat, it charged forward, sending the carnivorous Tyrannosaurus Rex flying as it attacked the lump of flesh. Foo ha 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 ha. My advance does not stop. Spiral attack, shouted a woman's voice, with extremely strange pronunciation. However, at that moment, the arms protruding from the lump of flesh began moving quickly, rapidly accelerating the lump of flesh's speed of rotation. It collided head-on with the charging huge triceratops that was over 10 meters in length, and it was the dinosaur that was sent flying. The huge triceratops, whose horns and cervical vertebrae had been crushed from the impact, as well as several Tyrannosaurus rexes that hadn't managed to avoid the collision, were scattered around the surroundings. If one ignored the size of the objects, this scene resembled a number of animals being sent flying by a car in a traffic accident. Ha 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 ha! Sieg! Translators note, Sieg is the German word for victory. Having gotten the better of the collision, the lump of flesh stopped rolling and the upper body half of a woman suddenly popped out from its top surface. Its surface was the same color as the rest of the lump of flesh, and it didn't have eyes or a nose, but from its outline and form, it was clearly the upper body half of a tall woman. The half-woman put her hands on her hips and held her chest out in triumph but the upper half of a person with a neutral form that was difficult to distinguish as male or female called out to her from the side. Valkyrie, cheat. Wa. Enma, why? Because Sieg isn't understood in Lambda. And no way. We gained experience points and our level went up, so it's fine, right? Okay? No. Because it's a game where you have to use only lambda words. 
Berserk, hold Valkyrie down. A flesh-colored golem appeared and squashed Valkyrie back into the sphere of flesh. No! Valkyrie cried. I'm weak! Hard work is! Valkyrie, it was in our previous lives that you were the weakest among us after Pluto. In this world, we all share the same attribute values. While the lump of flesh, Legion, was increasing its level, gaining skills and changing jobs, it had become able to separate its thoughts to some extent. Now, Valkyrie, Enma and the rest of the Eighth Guidance, as well as the Gazer Minima Hitomi, were able to speak separately. However, unlike in cases where a body was shared or cases of split personalities, their memories were completely shared. To make a comparison, it was like there were terminals called Enma and Valkyrie connected to the server known as Legion. That was the state that Legion was in. In this state, Legion was playing a game where only the use of Lambda's language was allowed as it leveled, in order to learn Lambda's language which was based on Japanese, to be more precise, Earth's Japanese rather than Earth's. Geez, that hurts. Enma suddenly looked behind him to see that three Tyrannosaurus Rexes seemed to have thought that this was an opening and taken the opportunity to start biting and shredding Legion's flesh. Three Tyrannosaurus Rexes, shredding and chewing the meat with their sharp fangs and powerful jaws. Ten humans' worth of flesh had already been eaten. However, Enma didn't feel a great deal of pain or much of a sense of danger. Status I see, so this is the phenomenon that occurs due to the existence of vitality, he said as he calmly cast the no attribute spell status and checked his own condition. Legion had lost around 10,000 of its 10 million vitality. In other words, Legion had taken 10,000 points of damage. Despite that, Enma and the rest of Legion didn't feel much pain because when considering the whole, this damage was small. The creatures of Earth or Origin wouldn't merely feel some pain if Tyrannosaurus rexes were to bite into them and shred a mouthful of flesh. Humans and other large mammals would die. Whales and elephants could survive depending on where they were bitten, but they wouldn't be able to remain calm, they would let out screams of pain. However, in Lambda, where vitality, the concept of hit points from video games existed, the size of wounds was determined by the damage amount in relation to the maximum hit point total. With a large amount of maximum hit points, even the bites of Tyrannosaurus rexes are just like scratches, Enma murmured. Still, we're being eaten too much, said Valkyrie as she and Azanami's upper bodies emerged next to him. We'll heal soon though, said Azanami. The two of them had vague forms, and Azanami in particular was unrecognizable at first glance as there were no tumors on her body. If you think that way, then attack back. I'm still not good at fighting, Enma told them. All right, Ereshkigal whispered. In the next moment, one of the Tyrannosaurus rexes that had been one-sidedly biting into Legion died as invisible fangs pierced the flesh of its head, sending blood spraying out. Enraged by the sudden counterattack, the other two Tyrannosaurus rexes tried to sink their fangs into Legion once more. However, one of the fragments of flesh remaining between one of the Tyrannosaurus rexes' teeth exploded, sending its head flying away. The last Tyrannosaurus rex was ended by a martial skill from the short sword in one of Legion's hands, quick draw, which slashed through the arteries in its throat. New flesh rose in the wounds where Legion's flesh had been gouged out, returning to normal in no time. Well then, shall we eat to make up for our exercise? You mustn't eat the skin, magic stones, or the bones, Jack. I know, Hitomi-chan. The arms and legs extended from Legion's sides, squirming and eating the meat of the dead huge Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus rexes as if assimilating it into itself. Pauvina and the others, who were taking a break, ate their obentos as they watched the spectacle from a distance. Hey, what does Sieg mean? Pauvina asked. It means victory, Pauvina, said a lump of flesh with the form of a girl, the personality of Pluto, which had separated itself from Legion. By the way, what kind of state are you in when you're using long-range control? Unlike the undead. Vandalio, we can't share our memories when we're separate. Hmm. 
Maybe it's because unlike Van, who is one person who splits himself, you were originally different people? I think so. For us, it's more like separation than long-distance control. Eat, said Eisen. Thank you, Eisen-san, said Pluto. All of the nearby dinosaurs are all going to Legion, so it's really easy for me, said Braga. Could it be that you guys are delicious? he asked Pluto. Please don't eat us, Braga-san. Legion had formed a party to level up with Pauvina, Rapy Cage, Yamada, Privil, Eisen and Braga, who had followed them to act as a scout. Separation, Rapy Cage groaned. Separation, Yamada sang. The two of them seemed to be imitating Pluto and trying their long-range control skills. They had detached their assorted parts from themselves and were moving them around. Rapy Cage had already possessed the long-range control skill, but Yamada's nine beautiful women's upper body halves were simply crawling around on the ground, creating quite the ghastly sight. Incidentally, Eleonora had been with them until yesterday to make sure that Legion, Palvina and the others could pass through Borcus's subdragon Savannah, but seemingly having decided that they would have no trouble with the upper and middle floors, she was leveling in the B-class dungeon, the Scaled King's Nest, starting from today. It seemed that she had been dissatisfied with the experience points that she could earn from a C-class dungeon as a rank 9 vampire viscount. It might have been fine for her to fight Mikhail, the rank 10 training dummy, but since she couldn't defeat him with her current fighting abilities, even though she would be able to polish her skills and improve her ability greatly, she wouldn't gain any experience points whatsoever. The zombie heroes Zandia and Gina were acting separately as well. This morning, thanks to the surgery skill of Isis who was a part of Legion, Zandia and Gina had been restored to a state that was extremely close to how they had been while alive. Now, they were training with Borcus in the B-class dungeon, Berigen's Fall Life Mountain, in order to become accustomed to their undead bodies. It seemed that they intended to once more battle their fated enemies once they were sufficiently accustomed to their bodies. Go Kasusama! Now then, let's get going. By the way, can you pass through the stairs after becoming that big? Won't you get stuck? Pauvina asked Pluto as she started picking up Yamada's upper body halves that were lying on the ground. Big, repeated one of Yamada's upper body halves. Stuck, said another. Pauvina couldn't be blamed for wondering this, Legion's main body had grown to be more than 10 meters in diameter. They've changed their size using size alteration, so it's fine, said Pluto. Oh! Size alteration is so nice! I want to learn it too. If I did, I could go and play at Braga and everyone else's house, said Palvina, who was around two and a half meters tall. It seemed that she was jealous of the ability to change size at will. However, size alteration was a skill that only monsters could normally acquire. Aren't there any magic items or drugs that have the effect of making you smaller? Pluto asked. Hmm, I don't know, said Palvina. I don't know either, said Privil. I've heard of things that make you bigger in folktales, though. I'll ask my mother when we get back. And so, the Inhuman Girls plus extra party members continued their leveling for a week. Name, Legion. Age, zero. Title, none. Rank, six. Race, Legion. Level, 87. Job, Enormous Meat Sphere Warrior. Job Level, 0. Job History, Apprentice Mage, Mage, Apprentice Warrior, Warrior, Meat Sphere Warrior. Passive Skills. Mental Corruption, Level 7. Composite Soul. Magic Resistance, Level 3, Level Up. Special 5 Senses. Physical Attack Resistance, Level 5, Level Up. Form Alteration, Level 3, Level Up. Super Speed Regeneration, Level 2, Level Up. Superhuman Strength, Level 3, New. Mana Enlargement, Level 1, New. Enhanced Vitality, Level 6, New. Strength and Attribute Values, Consumable Meat, Level 3, New. Active Skills. 
Limited Death Attribute Magic, Level 10. Size Alteration, Level 5, Level Up. Commanding, Level 3. Surgery, Level 5. Unarmed Fighting Technique, Level 6, Level Up. Short Sword Technique, Level 3, Level Up. Fusion, Level 2, Level Up. Charge, Level 5, New. Champ Revocation, Level 1, New. Parallel Thought Processing, Level 5, New. Long Distance Control, Level 3, New. No Attribute Magic, Level 1, New. Mana Control, Level 2, New. Surpass Limits, Level 1, New. High Speed Travel, Level 1, New. Strength and Regeneration, Consumable Meat, Level 3, New. Unique Skills God of Origins Divine Protection Zuraworn's Divine Protection Rickland's Divine Protection Gazer, Level 5 Job Explanation Zombie Maker A job for those who create zombies from corpses. It is a job with the effect of drastically reducing the time and mana required to create undead, including zombies, but especially zombies. The bonuses provided to attribute values is slight, but the job makes the creation of large quantities of zombies possible. But Bandalyu has always been capable of creating zombies without taking any time, and he has always possessed a vast amount of mana. Thus, by changing jobs to Zombie Maker and reducing the time and mana it takes to create zombies, he has acquired the unexpected side effect of unconsciously turning corpses in the area surrounding him into undead. Job Explanation Meet Sphere Warrior A job that can only be acquired by a member of an intelligent race whose body, which must be over a thousand kilograms in mass, is comprised entirely of meat. Naturally, Legion is the first to acquire this job in Lambda. This job greatly increases strength, stamina and vitality, and grants large bonuses to the unarmed fighting technique, charge, rapid healing, Legion possesses the superior skill to this, size alteration and cooking skills. Also, this job makes the owner's meat more delicious, and grants the ability to make delicious meat. If the level of the Meat Sphere Warrior job reaches 100 and the owner's body of meat surpasses 10,000 kg in mass, it becomes possible to change to the superior job, Enormous Meat Sphere Warrior. Note that the above recorded status is after Legion has finished leveling.